Welcome. Um, we are the, we're going to start this breakthrough, this gathering of the round table. Um, for those of you watching the recording, I am Bronwyn Olschlager and you're watching Noble Calling TV where we are actually, we house this opportunity to have a breakthrough every week with our tribe of queens, um, which we call the round table because we're a group of leaders and mentors who are generally surrounding this round table as equals to bring really great value to our tribe and to help people level up. And at this point in time, we've actually just redoubled our efforts as a whole tribe of Queens to really bring forward this message of helping, um, being assisting, really massively assisting in the prevention and rescuing and healing from the sex trafficking human slavery. So um, um, that's kind of an epidemic thing right now. I actually feel really emotional about it. So um, it's been something that's been on my mind personally for a long time. And when I heard that the tribe of Queens was focused on a, a great majority of the uh, membership dues that we pay to be part of this goes toward um, donating. And we've donated to helping children, and now we're just getting laser focused on rescuing people from those situations. So I'm really, really excited about that. And that's a new development as of the last several days, couple, well, it's been about a week since we made that decision to just be like, we're gonna free the slaves. And so, um, so welcome everyone. Um, we are, uh, we're taking the time today to go over our last, um, all the pinging is distracting me, <laughs> sorry, our last um, coaching call within the Global Tribe of Queens where it's whole life coaching. We focused on the center of the queendom and just for a little bit of reference, um, the center of the queendom is you and source. And I wish, let's see, I have a, I'm actually going to see if I can show this. I can. Here we go. When you when you join the Tribe of Queens, you get the opportunity to get this um, organizer, which is fabulous. Helps you organize your relationships, set your boundaries and everything. And this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see that. Um, let me just change the view for, let's see. I guess that's not gonna work. Okay, so for the sake of those who are watching the recording, this center of your queendom is your first, this is your first boundary. It's just you and your source. Um, for me, that's God. And so it's me and God and I do some meditation. I do some praying. Oh, good, Ruthie. I'm so glad you just got yours. I bet you're having fun with that. <laughs> first thing I did was sit down and make my yearly goals and break them down into monthly and weekly so that I could get to work on and be more productive. But the reason why this is such a big deal is because sometimes we let our relationships get in the way of accomplishing the things that we want to do in this life, the things that bring us fulfillment, the things that make us feel like we're doing what we're born to do. And for those of us who are mentors, I know that that's a really big deal, especially when we feel like we need to monetize. But here's, so here's the center of the queendom. And then we have, it's really hard to see because this video is so small. But then we have Queendom 2, which is your um, significant other. If you have one, your family, anybody that's really close, you know, the ones who have the key to your house and can walk in without permission. I like to see it that way. Um, Queendom 3 is your friends. And these are the people that you're not necessarily doing business with. They're your good friends. Sometimes you can do business with them and they become really close friends. But these are your people that are your people, you know. You, you've got a person, you go to that person. These are your good friends. And then Queendom 4 is where you go to work, where you go to church, um, community projects, things like that, where you're working with people. And then Queendom 5 is the world. So this would be a good example of that would be somebody that you're interacting with um, at the grocery store, but you don't really know them very well. And um, what we're doing is we're helping our mentors learn how to 
meet people in this outer kingdom and draw them in so that we're not only radiating out, but we're drawing people into our circle of influence so that we can be helpful to them. So, but we did focus solely on that first kingdom in the, in the um, coaching session in global the other day. And I was actually on that coaching call and I was featured on that coaching call to talk about people pleasing <laughs> and how it affects your center and how it helps you real like people pleasing is not the same as being nice to people. And so I want to talk about that a lot. Um, if you are there, can you just raise your hand if you've watched it or if you awesome. Okay. So Jennifer, you saw it. Yeah, you were there. I remember that. Natalie saw it. Natalie, um, Natalie, do you have anything particular you want to share with us as far as thoughts from, from your viewing before we move into the... So I was only able to watch half of it, so I have half the context. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what uh, we... Go ahead. Well, one of the things is really the queendom stuff is so important to me because it relates to me back to inner authority with our human design. Mm -hmm. And so listening to, um, Christine talked about um, tuning into your gut. And when we look at it from a human design standpoint, there's more to it than that. Like different people, a lot of people tap into their gut. Yes. But that's not for everyone, like I don't tap into my gut. So it's like, it's a, it shows up differently according to how we're designed. So mm -hmm. to me, the center of the queendom is this beautiful synergy of getting to know you as yourself and your source mm -hmm. and how the two of you really blend and meld and work together in order to create the life that you are here to live and the life that you want to live. And that feels really good. Mm -hmm. And so and going like getting that at the core and center and then you went into like the boundaries of stuff of how um people really treat you and how you allow other people to treat you but one of the things that i've come to know through my own healing process is that we only allow people to treat us as like we never allow people to treat us worse than we treat ourselves so if somebody's treating you really really badly and you're letting it happen, mm -hmm. really have to take a look at, wait a second, where is my connection with source and myself? And am I beating myself up more than this person is beating you up or treating you? And so then you can start take a look, taking a look at, oh, it really does start from the inside. And there's no judgment because I've been at some low places. And this is what I learned when I was at like the low places. I was like, wait a second. Like, I don't like this and I'm actually treating myself worse than the other person was treating me. Mm -hmm. and so I don't say this as like a judgment in a fact of like, you're letting people, like you're beating yourself up. It was, this is what happened to me. And it was this huge realization of like, oh crap. Yeah. I have to fix this <laughs> in order to be able to stand up for myself because mm -hmm. in order to stand up for myself, I had to be strong with this in my, in my brain and in my core, I had to feel it all the way through, which is getting you in the first queendom, getting you solid with your source in your center so that you can radiate out your own strength and not allow other people to take over. Yes. Thank you. you Okay. I want to really specifically very, very focused um, address people pleasing. And I want to bring somebody into the breakthrough bubble in this, um, during this meeting. And I also want to, um, address how to be a goal strider. So that's a little overview of what we're going to be, um, talking about today. And I want to, I want to talk about why, um, can somebody please help, um, Karen, get into the meeting. She's having a hard time getting in. She just needs the link. I did it as an invitation in a Facebook event, but I didn't post it in a thread. Um, okay. So I actually made a slideshow to walk through um, the breakthrough bubble and the goal striding points that I wanted to make. But before I go into that, I want to just have a discussion about what people pleasing is. 
Does anybody here feel like they are confident that they know what people pleasing is and they can put that out there? And, and I want to just make sure this is very clear. People pleasing is not the same as being nice to people. I can't say that too many times. It's not the same as being nice to people. It goes to the motivation as to why you are doing things for people and how it is dishonoring you or honoring you to do it. People pleasing is dishonoring yourself, right? So can I get somebody, oh, Diana, do you want to pipe up? Well, I guess since I typed it in, um, <laughs> I probably should put my like video on because it's working again. <laughs> so hopefully you'll see me. Um, I just typed in that people pleasing is bending over backwards to help others to your detriment. Yeah. So people keep coming to you and saying, will you do this for me? And you constantly say yes. And you never know how to say no when you need to say no. Yes. Okay. That's a really, really good, good one. Um, does anybody have an example from the past of how they have people please just really briefly? I have plenty. <laughs> Anybody want to be brave? Ah, Terry, I see you. I see you laughing at it. I know you got one. Do you want to share? <laughs> you're muted. Oh, you're muted, babe. Let me unmute you. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, I can't unmute you. Oh, good. Okay, go ahead. I yeah, I got, I got it figured out. Um, I've just had friends that ask and ask and ask and, and I'll say yes and yes and yes until I learned I don't need to always do that. But yeah, it happens if you get in that rut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, here's a really good one. I have this example and then I'm hopefully this will prime the pump. I would love some examples. I know the people watching this video are going to really thrive on hearing some examples that they might jive with and they might go, Oh my God, I gotta do that. And then we can talk about how to fix those. Um, let's see, I have two really good ones as far as relationships go in my family. Um, when I was first married, I thought that getting married meant I had to do the five love languages and be always guessing and trying to guess at how to apply and speak the love language of my husband. Um, but I wasn't fluent at it and it wasn't genuine for me when I was giving love that way. So for me, learning how to say, I love as me unconditionally, whether you get it or not, that for me snuffed out that people pleasing, like nothing else. It was awesome. And I feel so like, I'm like, Oh, I love you. Let me gush my way. And you can learn to interpret me and I will learn to interpret you. And you don't have to do anything to fall all over yourself for me either. And that feels so much more like love between that in that relationship now that I let go of that. I mean, that was like, I'm constant guessing. This is the epitome of people pleasing. Constant guessing and thinking, what are they thinking of me? How are they feeling? How can I affect that? How can I please them? Um, and it feels really gross. And then another one that I have is with my children and trusting them when they haven't earned it. I people pleased into a really bad place recently. And I allowed some really bad choices to happen that are really hurting one of my kids right now. And um, that was on me, I did that. And I can see where I have responsibility there. I can also see where they have responsibility there, but this is a people pleasing thing. Terry says that gives a whole new meaning to the gift of tongues. Oh yes, it does. Like the, um, the love languages thing. We need to be authentic to who we are and it doesn't, I mean, we're not hurting anybody. I'm a words person. So when I love, I'm telling you something, it comes out of my mouth and I like to hug. So if I'm hugging you and telling you things, you know, I'm saying, I love you. Some people it's an act of service. I've learned how to read that, but I, I no longer feel like, I know I don't feel authentic. I don't think of love that way. Um, so it's not natural to me to go, I need to get somebody a present, like even birthdays <laughs> or a present or do an act of service or whatever. Even on birthdays, it's like, oh, it's the day of. <laughs> Whoops, I didn't think of that because I'm thinking of words. I'm thinking of the card, you know? 
So, okay. Did that prime the pump? Does anybody have anything to add? Yes, Cole. And then I was just thinking that um, I have a habit of making sure that others feel good about themselves, no matter the sacrifice I have to make. Mm -hmm. um, because I know that's what I want is to feel accepted. So I think in my brain, it's like, um, if others are feeling accepted, then I'll feel accepted. And so then it's okay. And it doesn't matter what I sacrifice to get there. Mm -hmm. Even if it means giving up part of me. Is this the pattern that you're still in that you still catch yourself in? Yes. Okay. Do you want to be the one in the breakthrough bubble today? No. No. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Jennifer, you had another example. So this is kind of the epitome of the worst of people pleasing and you bring up that need to connect. Uh -huh. um, so my husband had Asperger's. Mm -hmm. as well as early onset dementia and we had a five-year period where <laughs> struggling to get the right medications and understand everything that was going on and with the asperger's and the combination of the dementia he really just didn't know how to communicate and didn't know how to say things and there were times where we would get in discussions and because of my need <laughs> to be able to understand and connect I literally, and I'm being very, very honest here, mm -hmm. pushed him to the point of suicide mm -hmm. more than once mm -hmm. because of my desire, my selfish need to connect. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, because of skills learned, Limitless came into our life right after that. Um, and we were in a very good place <laughs> when he passed. Um, so, but that was a really deep place in our marriage. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's hard. <laughs> People pleasing and that need to connect, um, can be a real bad place. Yeah, it really can. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm going to plant this seed, but we won't go into it too much today. Um, there are some different attachment styles that we have and each of these attachment styles are connected to a mental map that we developed when we were kids and you know mine that I have been I feel like I've come so far I don't even want to say that it's still my attachment style but it was fear fearful avoidant attachment style so if you look that up you can see people pleasing is uh, like severe with that attachment style so and there are some other ones go down that rabbit hole attachment style is a really cool rabbit hole to go down especially if you're a mentor you need to understand these things about people and their patterns um do you have anybody else who wants to share laura lynn okay yes um i have one daughter that is extremely demanding and gets if i don't give her the time she needs like when i was on uh, my first queens and Carrion, I was unavailable by phone and she was angry Ooh. but I was unavailable right and this has been a, a continual thing I've gotten I have gotten better but you know just I'm not available oh well mm -hmm. but but yeah. it is still it kind of is an instant gratification like they expect us as the people pleaser to be there drop at the drop of a hat i had someone in my past who was a friend of mine um this was like 20 years ago and she would call me at the last minute almost daily to come rescue her and be her babysitter at the last minute almost every day and when i started saying no she's like you're not my friend <laughs> like this when we set these boundaries it, it could have consequences that we don't love, but, and that are hard and may punch us in the stomach, but are actually better for us anyway. So, um, let's see if nobody else wants to offer. Oh, go ahead. Okay. We got Lori and then Terry. It was really hard when she was deployed to Afghanistan and she would be angry with us and not talk to us, you know, for, days and weeks at a time because mm -hmm. we weren't there i didn't send the the stuff that she wanted and it didn't get there right when it needed to be mm -hmm. or when she expected it 
when I couldn't have sent it any sooner. Right. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. And, but you know, you want, you don't want to, to leave things in a bad place when there's someplace like that. Right. Yeah. So that was really hard. Yeah. Um, Natalie, I'm feeling like you might have something to add. Something coming to you. So what just came to me is in Miguel Ruiz's Four Agreements book. How many of you have read that? Okay. Um, we have one. <laughs> Terry, who's one read it. Video on. Um, <laughs> what? One that has video on. <laughs> yeah. One that has video on, right. Um, one of the Four Agreements, and this, I read this 10 years ago and it is stuck with me so hard um, is to, in, in these are agreements with yourself is to not take anything personally. And he has this entire chapter on not taking anything personally and what that actually means, because ultimately what it comes down to is how the way that you do something and the other person or other people can have a myriad of other responses to what it is that you're doing. You have no control over how other people respond to you. Right. You don't. And it's just, that's how it is. And so realizing, oh, wait a second, I may be driving down the road and need to get off the freeway at this exit and somebody else may be in some weird hurry and they're cutting people off and swerving all around and I'm just doing my thing. And if they cut me off, some people may think, well, what, what jerk, how dare they ruin my day and blah, blah, blah. Like it can really go into a spot, but if you just step back and say, wait a second, how can I look at this and take it personally? I'm just doing my thing. I just needed to get off the freeway. Whatever they have going on in their life is their deal. And it actually has nothing to do with me. Nothing. Yeah. And so when we take a look at a lot of people's emotional reactions to things is really the reflection of what they have going on inside of them. And it has nothing to do with you. Yeah. You know, my, my solution to that, Cause I used to think that when I first moved to Utah, I thought everybody on the freeway was out to kill me. I don't legit, but I'm like, what is wrong with people? And then I would see something I know. And I'm like, you're not who I thought you were when you're driving, you know, but, um, but now it's like, oh, they like, I've done that before or, oh, they must be in a hurry or, oh, they must not have seen me there. Cause we, I'm in their blind spot or something like that. And it, it helps me to feel better to, it helps me feel like I don't have to be angry with them because they wouldn't want to be angry with me. Right. If I did the mistake, I, I want to forgive myself right now because I know it was just a mistake and I can just pay more attention, <laughs> you know? So, um, okay. I have a little over. Oh, go ahead, Diana. You're muted. I just had one thought. That Terry had something too. I forgot to. Oh yeah. Something keeps coming to me, and it happens a lot for me, which is in church or civic or school responsibilities, people just feel like they can ask me, and I'm supposed to say yes, because there's an understanding at school that parents will help, or there's an understanding at church that if I ask you, you're automatically going to say yes. And if there's it's a- like you're supposed to, like it's a- It's this whole uh, supposed to, thing that happens You're not to me. at choice yeah um i still have my freedom of choice and so that knocks a lot of heads at times for me mm -hmm. yeah and when we come into um contact with the the kind of person that is like i'm saying it this way my kids were actually complaining at me the other day i'm gonna use myself as an example my daughter has the job of cleaning the bathrooms it's her job so i said please go clean the bathroom. Thank you. And I thought I was being so respectful and, um, but it is her job. So circumstantially, you know, she knows it's her job to go to the bathroom. But the discussion from my um, 17 year old was like, mom, when you say it like that to people, they feel like they're not allowed to say no. And so then they get mad and it just causes this whole chain reaction. And that is how somebody may influence somebody to be a people pleaser. So I'm like, okay, checking myself. I don't want that for my kids. 
<laughs> you know, I don't, I don't want them to people please me. If they feel like they need to say no, then we get to have a conversation about why and help them come through the journey instead of just me going, you don't matter. You're not human. You know, and how often do we get treated like we're not human, like what you were saying, Diana, and how often do we treat somebody else like they're not, like they're not a thinker, right? Terry, did you have something you wanted to add still? Yeah, um, I was in a 30-year marriage where we were very happy in many, many ways. But after the divorce, I realized I was the people pleaser. And mm -hmm. it kept the marriage going because I just did everything he wanted me to do on demand. <laughs> and and it wasn't till after that that I found my true self, I think. And, and I know how to say no now. And, and, and I know if they're disappointed, that's their reaction, that I don't overload myself, but I do everything I can. I love doing things for people, but yeah. um, my marriage taught me that you don't keep a friend because you do everything they ask you to do. No. And you find out real quick from experience, you find out real quick who, where the two way relationships are. Yeah. After you start saying no. Yeah, and, and uh, that was sad. <laughs> but anyway, I, I learned the lesson, and I'm much better at not being a people pleaser awesome. at my own loss. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's hard. Terry. Terry's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um, I as you're talking about this, I'm thinking about... Um, the experience that I had going through um, a family situation with a brother who was trying to break a drug addiction. And we were talking about codependency and how we help others be with their addictions. And it just seems to me that that people pleasing and codependency are very much the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so we need to step back and think about um, not, yes, we have to take care of ourselves. We have to set our boundaries so that we're healthy, but we also need to look at that as, are we enabling somebody to carry on their unfortunate behaviors? Mm -hmm. um, by setting our boundaries, we're really helping those around us too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm really looking forward to spending more time in that book that you recommended called Boundaries. That's so, a good book. Um, I would rather read that one than Codependent No More, although I did read that one years and years and years ago. Um, I, I think that the Boundaries book, book series or just boundaries and boundaries in marriage would be really good things. Because I kind of decided to step up and take care of me a little more in my 43 year marriage. And my, my wonderful husband said, what happened to the girl I married? <laughs> I just said, she grew up. <laughs> you know, she's growing up. So... <laughs> They say men get married hoping their wife will never change and women get married hoping their husband will change a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it's important to remember that, um, that our boundaries aren't just for ourselves. Right. That's so true. And it does rock the boat when you make the shift from people pleasing to healthy boundaries. It really does. And you have, wow, it can be oh, oh, so ugly for a little while. But I will tell you this. Let, let me just give you this before we jump in. I'm going to share my screen. You are still doing the right thing. Even if somebody inadvertently, they don't even know they're doing it, starts to gaslight you because they're floundering, they're trying to grasp, they want things to be like they were. It challenges their pattern. It makes them question themselves when you set a healthy boundary for you. And you, it's effectively giving a consequence. And you'll see that in that book called Boundaries. That, um, 
here's an example from this, this book. This woman set a boundary. She didn't like that her husband just wouldn't tell her when she was coming home. She was always guessing whether or not he was okay. And um, the communication just wasn't there. And he would stay at work really late when she was expecting him home at, at a certain time and she would have dinner ready for him. So she set her boundary. She had let him know she would like him to communicate with her, but he just refused to do it. And so she stopped making him food. She fed everybody else. And as soon as he realized that she wasn't going to cater him to cater to him at any hour of the day, that she actually mattered too, he started calling and saying, I'm going to be late. Can you still have dinner ready for me at this time, please? And I'll be on time. And he started, you know, he got consequences. And so he shifted, right? But when she just asked for it, and this is the, here's the, here's the fault the like major failing of a people pleaser who hasn't healed yet. We know what we're aware and we go to the person who likes us to people please them. And we say, please stop asking me to people please you. Like, <laughs> and they go, what do you mean? There's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. <laughs> it, we just have to start doing it. And it does rock the boat. Okay. I feel like somebody has something to say. Who is that? Is that you, Natalie? No? Okay. No? Although I have a lot I could say about boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> because people pleasing, like it requires boundaries in it. It's why the boundaries in Tribe of Queens is so important to Bronwyn <laughs> because it solves a lot of clarity issues with those. I, yeah, I didn't even know what boundaries were until I met my now husband and realized that I had been walked all over for a really long time. And my boundaries had been crossed over and over and over, but I didn't even know what was happening. I didn't know what was going on with it. So that was something too of realizing, wait a second, what? <laughs> change this? And like, he showed me how to change it. He showed me how to put boundaries into place, which was one of the most valuable things that he's ever taught me. And so, you know, it's like, if, if boundaries have never been taught to you and then coming back and being around family and stuff, I'm like, Oh, I see where it came from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we do get to look back and laugh at ourselves by the way. Cause it's a lot yeah. more fun. Man, have I grown? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me just pull this. Everybody see this. Okay. I'm just going to not do the whole present view thing. Okay, so when we talk about the breakthrough bubble, I feel like it's really important to really understand the structure of the breakthrough bubble. Um, when I go into my breakthrough bubble, it's like everything that happens in here is not real, not really. It's, this is where I'm changing my reality. And so if I think about it as it's not real, I feel like I have more power to create. And so let's say we go back to an, um, a pattern that we are in where we continue to see ourselves giving in. And we really, what we're looking for is to be aware of the thought and the emotional response to what we're doing or what we're not doing that we know we need to do, okay? Um, and the, the conscious thought that I need to be doing something differently as with me and my mothering right now, I need to be doing something different, but it challenges my old pattern so much that I feel rocked, right? So awareness of the thought and the emotional response is the very first step. And then awareness of the subconscious micro behaviors and internal headbutting that's going on inside of you because the subconscious program is second nature. Your subconscious program, you do it without having to think about it. Natalie talks about this in your human design. There are things that are just subconscious, just like second nature. It's part of who you are. It's your way of going through life naturally because it's how you were designed. Um, but some of these things are just patterns and are not strengths or we have yet to turn those strengths into, or those natural things 
from um, the way that we're going about them may be a weakness and we need to change that into a strength. So that goes to, we have some internal headbutting going on. And remember the um, pendulum in the Queen's Imperium training where he's not moving, right? He's trying to hold it still. So he's holding his body still because the pendulum gets to hold still or he, the pendulum gets to swing without him moving at all. But then the pendulum swings. And the reason is because his subconscious program is trying to do what he's, what he's been told to do. And so when you tell your subconscious program to do something, it's going to do it. And so his body was doing those micro movements that we could barely see and the pendulum would swing one way or the other, right? So this, this actually goes to exactly that. And when your subconscious mind is battling, you're going to see, um, that's a really good illustration without being like, um, it doesn't matter if the pendulum swings, right? But in a lot of the choices that we're making, we're actually trying to set a new pattern in our life because there's something damaging going on. And so like maybe you, I talk a lot about money. Like let's say maybe you want some money and you have a subconscious program that says that money is bad and you hear this all the time, but your micro movements are going to keep you from getting the money, even though you're saying, but I want money. So you have to address the habit that's going on and get the, the, the thing where you believe money is good and all these kind of things so that you have your micro movements going toward the goal instead of away from it. So that battle stops. Are we clear? So good. Okay. So then number four is we address the subconscious program. We do that through repetition. What's really happening. It's really like this awareness is it can be painful. Oh my gosh, I'm doing that. We can start shaming ourselves really easily. And then we want to pull out of that. Natalie, you just got unmuted. Did you have something you want to say? I was going to add to this the unconscious programming and, and what's really happening and what I see with this. Um, and boy, I wish I would have had you in my life like years ago because yeah. it's been a hard road to learn all this stuff by myself. Um, but what I'm seeing is our subconscious is designed to keep us safe. And so we have that internal head budding because we have one part of us, we're designed to grow. Mm. and fulfill like what we're here to do like we all know that we feel it inside of us that we have a purpose but then we have the subconscious part of us just like oh no 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 you must stay safe but that comes from programming from all sorts of places in our lives and we don't always see it because it's subconscious right so we have to we have to get brave we have to get brave to look at what's under the surface of the water and see the majority of the iceberg that's really impacting our lives. Because when we're just looking above the surface, we don't see enough to be able to address it intelligently or effectively. And what that, what that can look like is what you see in a lot of people out there where um, like they, okay, um, I used to be a weight loss instructor. Or, or I help people overcome emotional eating and that went to weight loss. And they were trying to address their slim down through just the eating instructions. But uh, the big important piece was to do their mental work, their inner work. And when people were skipping that step or skipping both steps, they failed to change their environment internally and externally. They didn't see results. Okay. Um, Ruthie, did you have something you want to say? <clears throat> I can't, I can't see you right now. And I think you might still be muted. Okay. If you're talking. Can you see me now? Oh, yep. You're showing up now. Okay. So your, your conscious mind will always ask your subconscious mind for per permission to do something but your subconscious mind never asks your conscious mind for permission right it thinks it, it knows just like it knows to keep your heart beating yes 
It just, and so, you know, and until you can get your conscious mind to start working, you know, you, you just, you got to change that programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing that just popped into my mind is this is very like, I have a friend who was learning to do scuba diving. And she put on the scuba gear and she was terrified to submerge, terrified. Um, she was crying. She was sobbing. They were having to talk her through it. She finally got it on and went under the water and had a good time. But it felt so scary to her to be under the surface of the water so that she could see everything that was down there. It just felt so alien to her that she had an emotional experience with that a negative emotional experience with that it can feel like that to go after these things that are under your surface and just remember your reticular activating system those nerves that are right here at the base of like right here under your where kind of where your head sits on your spine that's designed to be a doorway you can let something you can let things come up in front of your consciousness one thing at a time. And who was it? I think somebody on here last week was saying, it's like, um, I see it in my mind. I see like lots of snowflakes and they're all connected by a little piece of string. And if you just deal with one snowflake, they're all connected and lots of stuff happens. You have a, a, a domino effect on your subconscious mind when you're willing to just deal with one thing at a time. It unravels a lot of stuff. Um, okay. I cannot, while well, I have my screen sharing, I can't see the chat easily, so let me see here. Malay is saying, I must look for the conflict in me, and that is where the change needs to happen. And Diana says, yes, I agree, Kole. Conflict, frustration, or triggering, fear and anger, is where the change needs to come from. That's a really good point. Like, we can't shy away from those triggers. That's why I always celebrate them. Imagining the desired end result with emotion makes the new program take best repetition plus emotion equals faster and better results, which is exactly, thank you. It's exactly what we're going after here. We need the repetition to create that second nature effect. It's like when you're learning to drive a car, it's so scary. Do you remember learning to drive a car in traffic on the freeway? I remember. <laughs> and somebody said, this is why I call it the second nature effect. Somebody said to me, don't worry. You just keep practicing and it's going to become second nature. And then you won't even think about it. You'll just get in and do it. That is what we're going after. I forgot a parenthesis here. I'm just going to add it because I can. Oops. So, okay. So that's what we're going after. And that's when, what we're addressing. When we're in the breakthrough bubble, we're conscious. We're not telling stories. We don't need the stories. So you don't have to worry about sharing anything private. We're just going after the pattern. What is the belief that you have? That's what you need to be aware of. What is the belief? For me, I like to tell the whole big long story of how I, when I'm private, when I'm in private with somebody <laughs> helping, if somebody, if I'm hiring somebody to help me have a breakthrough, that person gets my, like I get to open up and, and spend my hour with them the way that I want to. Yeah, Natalie. So I, I want to dive into what Cole just talked about a little bit. Okay. Uh, play with me for a minute. So Cole, I'm going to repeat it. She says, I must look for the conflict in me. And that is where the change needs to happen. And so I'm curious with your point of view, Bronwyn, do we always know what to look for? No, we don't. I mean, it's, that's why we need help. Cause like, when you have somebody that is educated in what the patterns look like, that's, um, that's, that's huge. And it's more than just, um, you can go to a therapist and you can talk, 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 but to have somebody that really understands the patterns and knows this process to help you move through the, you know, from one step to the other, that's actually, um, something that it's hard to, it's hard to get it by yourself. I had to have a lot of help. I had a lot of these facilitated for me before I was really good at helping other people. Now, is that because, good, because that's what I was wondering, because it took me a really long time and I had to get a lot of different help from a lot of different people. And some of it was just like pissed me off and made me mad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like your head <laughs> spinning around. <laughs> like, yeah. And I'm um, like, no, I'm not going to change. Yeah. So 
if it's hard for us to find it for ourselves, like, but when it comes up to the surface, and this is my own experience. When I see the pattern, somebody else has to point it out to me and then it'll resonate in my body of like, oh crap, there it is. But are there, are there ways that we can start to identify like, and I like what Diana is saying too, of like the conflicts of frustration and triggering the fear and anger. Um, are those the main things that come up when we need the change like what else does it would it look like um honestly it's when i'm with somebody in and we can kind of go through this i want to do just a really short breakthrough bubble but um when i'm helping somebody with their breakthrough i ask them questions that come to me because i can see i mean i've studied this to death there, all people have about the same patterns. Like we're not so different from each other. And so that in that it's comforting. Like here's the set of patterns that many, many humans have. And it all comes back to mostly comes back to self-love, honestly, how they feel about who they are and how they show up. And, and then secondary is how they feel about other people, which is really a, a reflection of how they feel about themselves when they're able to notice. So let's say, um, let's say we're mad at somebody, we're triggered. We're mad at somebody, they did something. The pattern is I'm mad at myself because I don't like it when I do that. But that takes a lot of honesty to get there. And so when I'm helping somebody with a breakthrough, it's a lot of, okay, we're going to call this what it is. I'm going to tell you what I see um, so that you can see it too, so that we can do something about it. And I have people going, no, you're wrong. You don't know I'm going to keep this forever. And they just, you know, it doesn't feel amazing the whole time, but it does feel amazing at the end once we're admitting what we're seeing and admitting what doesn't feel good. And it doesn't feel good to keep that pattern. Yeah, that's a scary place to be. And also bravery is an excellent word for that to be <laughs> radically honest with ourselves um, <laughs> with that. And um, Karen is asking, she has a couple of questions. Um, she wants to know what kind of therapist to talk to. And, and I'm just repeating in the chat and then you recommended a mentor instead. And Karen's also asking what, is there a specific kind of mentor because there's so many types and Karen also volunteers for the breakthrough bubble. Okay. I, I, actually, I actually specialize in this kind of mentoring. So I recommend me or somebody like me who specializes in this kind of mentoring. <laughs> so why don't we go ahead and jump into that then? Oh, Diana says, this is one of the things I can, I like to teach. Okay. Yeah. Diana has studied a lot of this too. The key to change is recognizing unwanted emotions, then identifying the stinking thinking that created these emotions. There is a pattern to this. And Terry says the status quo, as it is familiar, is way less scary than change. A lot of hand holding is wanted. Yeah. And and there's like when you study your human design, you there are some people who like need to operate by themselves, and there are more people who need a hand to hold. And so it's actually part of your design, whether or not you want to be guided. So that's a good question to ask Natalie as well. Um, but let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing the screen. Oh, I want to, let me cover this really quick first. There is the, the last step to the, in the breakthrough bubble that I'll walk you through is to set a goal, which is your inspired next step. And when you think forward, when you're thinking forward, you're empowering yourself. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to like, if you want to take a screenshot of this, go ahead. I'll leave it up for, for a second, but then we're going to hop into the breakthrough bubble with Karen. Okay. Hey, Ron, can I say something about what you just said? Yeah. I was listening to, um, I forget his name, but somebody was giving a talk at a graduation and he said, that, um, that desire you have to do something or that itch, like, like the, you go call it a nudge, you know, um, to help other people. He said, that is God's 
promise to you in advance that it's already yours. Mm, yeah, um, I love that. Thank you. Oh that is the strangest way of knowing. And then everything, okay, I love what you just said. Whenever I set a goal, I know I have, I'm doing that hand in hand with my source. And therefore, I know that I'm not going to waver. And if I waver, I know I'm going to address the pattern instead of whether or not I'm going to do the goal. That's really big. Okay. Okay. Karen, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So I'm going to invite you to just get really relaxed. Do you know what pattern you want to address? Mm, well, I've been working a lot with this on Sharon. Um, a lot on this with Sharon, but, uh, and I shouldn't talk very loud because my husband's in the next next room asleep but um but remember, oh, I'm a people huh I was gonna say remember you don't have to tell any stories to do this so you don't have to share anything okay. it's just that I I um don't know how to strike a good balance between keeping marital harmony and a good relationship and doing what um is best for me and the things I know I need to be doing when that's not what my husband wants me to be doing does that make sense mm -hmm. okay um so this for you, does this feel, does it feel true that this is a people-pleasing pattern that you want to address and unravel? Yeah. Okay. Does it feel true that this goes back to an old idea, an old mental map, maybe somebody else's mental map about what marriage should look like? Possibly. Okay. Um, well, you know, uh, those of us that I religious um, training, well, I don't even know if it is religious training. If it is, it's religious training from way back, mm -hmm. like when I was young, mm -hmm. a child, um, that the head of the home, the husband is the head of the home, you know, you know and the wife is the, his support system, his um, second in command. Mm -hmm. And that the children, you know, then of course do what they say. Mm -hmm. But um, when there was a disagreement between the two, especially in the women, you know, like, you know, one of the prophets says, tell the women what to do. Just don't tell the women what to do. Just get out of their way and let them do it. You know, he's not, he doesn't ascribe to that mm -hmm. at all. It's like, if I'm paying it, you're going to do it my mm -hmm. way. And so, okay. Um, and he's a good man, don't get me wrong, but. No, I mean, it's a pattern. We're just addressing the pattern, not who's good and who's bad, so it's okay. Okay. Okay, so do you feel like it's your job to break that pattern in you right now so that you can be doing those things that you feel called to? Yes. Okay. So let's look at that and in reference to people pleasing, go ahead and take a couple of deep breaths. Let's let go of the tension on your heart and in your stomach. A little bit in your throat, just go ahead and let it fluff off down to your feet and through the floor. Job. Okay. At the center of what I hear you saying, I hear that you feel like it's your job to make sure that the boat never rocks, ever. And at the same time, you feel like what you're doing rocks the boat. And so you kind of feel like it's your fault. Is that accurate? Um, well, it's just felt like I felt the need to quit my job, and I did, and that was not a well pleasing thing like that, you know. Um, so yeah, the thing I feel any need to do definitely rock the boat. Okay. 
is it is it somewhere under your surface that there is there this belief that it's your job to make sure he's not mad at you for your choices? I guess, yeah. We're, go we're going after this underlying fear. The pattern is rooted in fear, right? Yeah. So what is this, what is this fear that you're feeling? You tell me. Well, I, I feel like, I don't know if it's a fear or a desire because I, I just, my love language is um, words of affirmation. And I just am always seeking for affirmation. Mm -hmm. And it's a rare thing <laughs> to get up from. Okay, I, I love it. I mean, I think you just totally nailed it. Is it your job to get him to show love to you the way you want him to? I no. Well, the thing is. Either will or he won't, and then I'll either feel loved or I won't. Mm -hmm. um, and no, I can't make him. That's mm -hmm. so it's not my job. I I can't do anything about it. Really. Right, right. So, what if you're looking at this as a pattern in you instead of a what he needs to do differently? Because he's fine. I mean, I'm sure he shows you love his way all the time, right? He does. His okay. way. Yeah, his way, which is appropriate. And and like we were talking about before, like I had to learn this too. This is unconditional love. You get to unconditionally read or hear or whatever his love language and receive it as love. But we have a tendency to want people to, to show love the same way we do, but that's it's not authentic to them if they don't show love the same way we do. <laughs> authentic as their first and I'm doing that the best I can. I mean, I, my brain is aware that that's what needs to be happening. And yeah. I'm doing that I can, but it doesn't change the the wish. You know, like, just once, could he brag on me and be proud of me? Could he just manage to do that once? I feel you. I feel you. Okay, so what what needs to happen here is that now that you're aware and that you, I mean, I can feel your... Well, go ahead and try to let the tension on your heart go so that this can flow, okay? Because it's going to come through you. The truth of it needs to come through you. Okay. The truth is that the fact is of life is that you can feel loved how he gives you love and you can satisfy your own need. Feel validated. And you can also go find people like me who are all about the words, right? So that you could get that satisfied. Yeah. Um, but if we're, if let's go into this under, let's go, imagine that, um, that piece of you that's crying for that validation is like a little girl inside of you. Just remembering that this is an old, it's an old decision that got made by you a long, long time ago. Either you thought it or somebody else told you that this is how it's right and how it should be in order for you to be happy to do your stuff. And if you were, yeah, if you were to give some really good advice to that deep, early decision what's the advice can you repeat the question <laughs> yeah yeah this decision is represented like it's your little girl like maybe this little girl is three or four even i mean this could have happened a long time ago where you decided that this is how it's supposed to be. What's the decision, what's the advice that you would give to this early decision so that it can unravel and change? 
well, it hasn't served me so far at all. And I have a good opportunity ahead of me, so I need to reach for that instead. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you need to have your dukes up in order to do it? Because you don't like that. That doesn't feel good. No, it just means to stand in my, my power. And know that if I have source with me, then I can um I can do it. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what other people think. It has to matter most what source thinks of me. Mm -hmm. I should get my information from you. Yeah. Okay, so what's your new choice? Now remember this this feels good to her like it's starting to click with her but there's still some resistance and that's how it is and so we need to make a decision about what the new belief is and then we need to allow an inspired next step an action okay and we're going to choose an internal and an external action to go with this new belief okay so what do you want to believe if the belief is that you have to have his um, approval in order for you to be happily doing what you want to do and that you have to maintain harmony like it's your job to keep harmony like it's not his job <laughs> to have to the other side of that you know letting go of that what's a, a new belief that feels more true to you that sings you want it to sing here okay it's like oh yes i love that i want to get that to be part of me instead it feels good emotional happy response um, that I need to um, I don't know I'm not sure where you're going no I, I'm letting you go I'm letting you go there <laughs> and this is a belief not a you need to do something yet okay so allow this to be the new belief like for example he is allowed to feel how he feels. And I can let him go through his process and love him from right where he is and still do all my things. Well, that works for me. <laughs> He's allowed to feel what, what he feels. I need to be consistent so that he doesn't get confused. Mm, okay. It's my job to just be consistently me following source mm -hmm. and then he can respond however he needs to that's pretty beautiful so that sounds like your your first inspired next step so let's give that some um, more solidity what does that look like like what's your next thing like that that what does it look like in this day to day physically to be consistent one thing I'm inconsistent about that frustrates him is what I eat. Because in my heart and my brain, I know I should be raw vegan most of the time anyway. Mm -hmm. And I try that, but then he's not. And there's tempting food in the house, and I don't. And then he takes mm -hmm. me out, and there's not the right options. So mm -hmm. I eat other stuff. And he's just always confused. Well, are you drinking milk this week, or are you not? Are you eating <laughs> this week, or are you not? And it would be fairer to him to stay consistent. Um, yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Do you want my thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. When you're creating your repetition, because remember you need to morning and night do, and anytime you think of it, never say I'm inconsistent anymore. You say I'm consistent at blah, blah, blah. And if you catch yourself admitting that you're not, get back in there and say this is what I am because the point is to train everything that's under the surface, the bottom of the iceberg, if you will, to know that this is true and this is second nature now. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, if you want to write these down, this is what I, what I do embrace, is he's allowed to feel how he feels. He's allowed to grow from right where he is, and I love him. I see him. This is a struggle. Right? The people around us, when we change, they have their own struggle. And then you said you need to be more consistent, and then you gave me a list of what the top of the things on your list are that are the most confusing to him. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so just make the rest of that list that you feel like you need to be consistent about and then start taking that action to tell yourself that you're always consistent at this. Never admit, never, it's like we have this misconception that admitting the truth about ourselves <laughs> is so good, but we're here to create a new reality. That's what we're doing in the Breakthrough Bubble. So everything that you come away with today from this Breakthrough Bubble moment is for you to change your reality. All the circumstances on the outside get to change after the circumstances on the inside change. After. It's got to be second nature first. So you, can, you cannot worry about watching how he responds to all of this until after you have no more doubts and it's like easy. I'm always consistent. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm always consistent and I always look at him when he's having a struggle and say, ah, oh, I love you. You're going through a thing. Right? You can try. Okay, do you feel good? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Natalie, I feel like I need to have you wrap up today. Do you want to do that? Yes. <clears throat> yes. My cat is cuddling with me. So if you see her like all over, <laughs> she's like, yes. She, she's my energy working cat. And so anytime like energy shifting stuff happening is happening. She's all, like all over me. <laughs> stuff. So I'm curious that Bronwyn, that was incredibly powerful and beautiful the way that you walked you. Karen through that. Um, and I'd like to hear a little bit of feedback from the others who are on the call. Like, what did you get out of that session for yourself? Because anytime we get into something like a breakthrough bubble that somebody else is experiencing, we always get something out of that for ourselves. So I want to hear little tidbits of what did you get out of that session? Do you want to pipe up? Kole, hi. <laughs> hey. I was just thinking, well, I wrote down five um, patterns I noticed about myself um, while she was talking. It just came to the surface. So like you said, it bubbled up um, and I wrote them down. So I'm going to start working on those. I think that too often, I mean, the biggest one is I feel guilty because I don't want to care for other people sometimes. And it's not that I don't want to care for them. It's just that I don't want to care for them in the way they think they should be cared for. So we have different perspectives on what they can and can't do mm. and um, it comes back to a pattern of my mother giving up her whole life to take care of all of us and she never did she never has done or is continuing to do anything that is supportive of herself and I don't, I don't want to fall into that, but I can see where I have over and over again. That's such a great realization and awareness around that. Thank you for sharing, Kalei. So thank you for the help. Yes, Bronwyn, thank you for the help. <laughs> and um, let's see, Diana, I'll get to you in just a second. Um, Jessica, and you can go ahead and unmute yourself, but Jessica had posted in the chat um, that this really does hit very close to home. She loved it. What you said about getting yourself consistent without worrying about people's, other people's reactions until you are proud of your work. Um, all right. Thank you for sharing that, Jessica. That was really powerful too. Um, and Diana? I love chess. And sometimes I think that we get into our story and we get wrapped up into our story and we forget that we're trying to checkmate the other king. <laughs> so I like to think of this pattern and this process of reminding us that this is our work and we're not trying to do somebody else's work and we're not trying to say this is what he needs to change or this other person needs to change. It goes back to ourselves. Well, what can I do? about this situation and this circumstance and talking about what am I believing? What would I rather believe? What feelings am I having? What feelings do I really want to have? And so we're taking it back to us and empowering us. 
And that's what I love about this kind of work and the process that goes into it. So thank you, Bronwyn, for being able to see it the way you do it. I love it. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Diana. And I, I just want to have us recognize Karen for just a minute of how, of, first off, thank you for being so brave in showing up and allowing us to be in the breakthrough bubble with you because this is a very, very intimate and personal space. Bronwyn usually doesn't share this space with other people because it is so intimate and precious for people. So you don't actually see a lot of like her talking about it because it is so private um, for people to do this. And this may brought up, have brought up a lot of um, really like deep beliefs, very intimate things for yourself too. So if you're feeling that you, like it brought some stuff up to the surface and you're needing to work through that, like connect with Bronwyn. You guys, we're all connected with her on Facebook. Send her a message and say, I, I need to be in the breakthrough bubble and she'll get a private breakthrough bubble just for you. <laughs> That's not on the call with everyone else. Um, but it does takes it takes a lot of bravery just to show up and say I I need to be able to see the patterns because that subconscious mind will keep us safe or tries to keep us safe when we actually need to break through that. So thank you for demonstrating the brilliance that you bring to the table, Bronwyn. You're welcome. I do have a coupon code for our tribe of queens ladies too. Just like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> coupon codes. So. Um, you'll get that through private message. Yeah. Okay. Just let me know if you need me. Okay. Okay. With that, should we do our woo? <laughs> Everybody on mute. We're just going to hoot. If now the truth is in. It's too fun. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, three. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you all next time and in the group. Oh, but for those of you who are watching, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell. And if you want to join us in Facebook, it's Tribe of Queens, the round table. And we'll see you soon. Thanks, Bronwyn. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. Thank you Bye. Bronwyn. Hey, everyone.